Hello, I'm Samantha, and I'll be talking about online libraries, what they are and how to use them. So what exactly are online libraries? So online libraries offer a broad selection of online resources, including audiobooks, ebooks, research platforms, movies, magazines, and articles. Many public libraries offer online content. And additionally, there are individual and private online libraries. Public online libraries. Almost every public a library offers some digital content on their website. In order to access this content, you are likely required to have a library card. So we'll go over how to get access in the next slides. Steps to access the online content of your local library. So first, find your local public library, then register for a library card, and then log in online. And lastly, enjoy eBooks, audiobooks, and video content online. So here's a list of a few public libraries in Canada. So we have the Toronto Public Library, Ottawa Public Library, and so much more. So once you have access to uh, this Google Slides, you can find your library. How to find your local library online. So first go on Google and type in the search bar, public library, then the name of your city. For example, public library, Ottawa, and then hit enter. So how to get access to library cards. You'll be required to have a library card. Many libraries allow you to register online for a library card during this pandemic. So over here, as an example, in the Vancouver Public Library website, you can click on get a library card um, and then you can fill in the information. So look for a get a library card link and then click on it and follow the steps. Fill out your personal information and click I agree. You will likely be required to show proof of residence. So as an example here, you would enter your information and remember that at the very end, you have to click on I agree. Special online library cards. So many public libraries have developed special online only library cards. In Toronto, you have to have a 647, 416 or 437 area code. It was developed to make library resources more accessible in light of COVID. You won't be able to take out physical books. In Toronto, the cards expire in September. How to get access to library cards. Again, so once this pandemic is over and public library branches are open again, you can also visit your local library branch to get your library card. Just make sure to bring your proof of residence, so bills, bank statements, et cetera, and a piece of identity, so your driver's license and your passport. Note that your first library card is often free, but if you lose your card and require a new one, they will most likely charge you a minimal amount of around $2. Exploring digital content. Once you have access, you can listen to audiobooks, read ebooks, read magazines and newspapers, watch movies, and lastly, listen to music. Taking it further, many public libraries also offer programs you can participate in. Check the website of your local library for information and dates. Please be aware that in-person programs are canceled due to COVID-19. You can also find many resources, articles, and podcasts on the websites. So from the pictures, there are just different uh, live and online programs that are available. Public library access in the US. 
So most public libraries in the US work similarly to those in Canada. Simply follow the same steps. First, find your local library, then register for a library card, then log in and enjoy. So again, here is a list of a few uh, public libraries in the US. For example, the New York Public Library, San Francisco Public Library, and so much more. And again, to find your local library, open Google, write public library, then your city name, and then hit enter. So there are other options for online libraries. There are many other providers that offer free online content. Many of these are nonprofit organizations who aim to make books available for everyone. For these, you do not need a library card and you can access these websites from any electronic device. Also note that uh, you need to verify that the website you are using is approved and does not offer illegal downloads. A list of useful websites can be found on the next slide. So here is just a list of some free online libraries that you can access from anywhere. We have ReadPrint, Public Bookshelf, and for today we'll be going over uh, Internet Archive and Overdrive. So Internet Archive. Internet Archive is a non-profit library of millions of free books, movies, software, music, websites, and many more. You can also sign up for free using this link. What is Open Library? The Open Library um, stated that their goal is to provide a page on the website for every book ever published. At its heart, Open Library is a catalog. We have well over 20 million edition records online provide access to 1.7 million scanned versions of books and link to external sources like WorldCat and Amazon when we can. So here are some benefits of using online library. First, it's free to borrow, read, and bookmark your chosen books right in the site's viewer. Also options to download books if available and preferred to your computer or a tablet. If you have a desktop, then Overdrive um, would be the best option for you. And if you have an Android tablet, then you can also use Adobe Digital Editions app. Keep a reading log of currently reading, already read and want to read books. So here is Open Library. So you can also browse by subjects, lists, K-12 student library, random books, and advanced search. You can also have the ability to adjust your settings for viewing, filtering, and sorting your open library. Other resources for audiobooks. So you can also use YouTube if you want to find certain audiobooks, meaning no video. So you'll need to have an internet connection and will get interrupted by ads unless you have YouTube Premium. Audible. For Audible, you can get two free audiobooks and 30 days of Prime free. And Audible only has audiobooks. And we also cover Audible um, in a past webinar. Also, Spotify has audiobooks, but no ebooks, and they're found under Word and Browse. Listening to audiobooks on YouTube. First, go to youtube.com, then search for audiobooks, and then hit enter. Then you'll find a variety of different stories to listen to. So we have Harry Potter as the first example, and there are many more that you can scroll down to look for. Accessing material through Overdrive. Overdrive is a company that gives you access to audiobooks and eBooks without having to pay. 
you'll just need a library card. The company operates worldwide, so you can use it wherever you live. So using OverDrive through your browser, if you're accessing through your computer or want to use your internet browser, go to overdrive.com slash account slash sign up or enter OverDrive sign up in your browser, like Google Chrome, Safari, etc. And the first link you see should be the right one. So you'd click on this red button and you'd enter the name of your library. Next, you'll be asked to enter your library name. Click name instead of location as location tends not to work. Put in your city or region. It doesn't matter which branch you click on as long as the library is correct. For example, my home branch is Riverdale, and I could choose North York because it's also part of the Toronto Public Library. So let's say um, you put in Toronto, you can click on whatever link, and you need to have your card number and the PIN to sign in to OverDrive. So accessing through the app Libby. If you want to access your material through your phone or tablet, you don't have to go through all the previous steps. Instead, you can download the OverDrive app Libby. You can look for Libby in the App Store or the Google Play Store. Once you downloaded Libby, click on the app and follow the prompts. We also covered Libby in a past webinar. So now I'll be showing you a live demo for Archive and Overdrive. So Internet Archive, again, is a nonprofit library of millions of free books, movies, software, music, websites, and more. So if we go to books, then we have different options. So what we're going to explore first are books to borrow. So as you can see, there's so many books and you can search for a specific book. So let's say you wanna read about birds. Then I'll type in birds right here. As you can see, we have a variety of books that are based on what I just type in, birds. You can also um, filter your searches by the year, by the topics and subjects. Oh, there are already birds here. Um, animals and other options. Also by the creator and the language. So for the books to borrow, this only applies if you have an account. So at the top right, we see here that it says sign up. So we click on sign up. And you can sign up for an account. This just means that certain books that you need to borrow require an account. Now if we go to open library, also have millions of options. You can also browse by the genre like art, science fiction, fantasy, and more. Some of them you do still have to borrow them, but the majority of these books, you can just read them right away. So since I clicked on read, now there are options at the bottom right of the screen where you can flip the pages by using the left and the right arrow. You can make it so your screen has only one page or back to the default. And using this button with the four squares, you can look at all of the pages there are. So there's so many pages to scroll through. 
And if you prefer to um, listen to an audiobook, then that's always an option just by clicking on the headphones. Also zoom out, but most importantly, you can zoom in to see clearer. And to exit full screen, you would click on toggle full screen. So now I'm back outside and I can click on books again to browse through uh, even more books. We also have different libraries. We have American libraries, Canadian libraries, and so much more. If I click on Canadian libraries, uh, I will click on uh, the first option, which is the University of Toronto, and click on collection. Over here, again, we have um, some more books, but specifically, um, in the Canadian um, libraries. So that's archive um, for, uh, or internet archive. And next I'll be going over OverDrive. So if we go to OverDrive, again, you can search up overdrive.com or just OverDrive and it should be the first link you see. And you click on Browse Collections. So now you can see the different genres. Similar to Archive, you can see biography, business, children, fantasy, and so much more. So let's say I like to learn about history. I'd click on History. And a thing to keep in mind is that these symbols mean that this one with the headphones is, um, is an audiobook. But if you just wanna uh, read an, um, an ebook, then it should just have a book symbol. So now I can see um, about the book. And if I want to search for a specific book, then at the top right, you should see search by title or author. So I typed in the title of a book that I want to read and scroll down again, so many options. And I'm going to click on this one, which is an ebook. So over here, there are different libraries. You can also view more libraries to see if um, your library is there. So these libraries are, um, so these, this book is only available in these libraries. So remember to look for the library that you want. As an example, I'd click on view a library site. And I place a hold, except I need to have um, my card number and my pin to sign it. Now to get an account for OverDrive, as we demonstrated um, in the slides, you click on sign in at the top right of your screen. And then sign up, it's free right here. And then you'd click on sign up using library card, which is this big red button. So let's say um, I type in Ottawa. I'd click on my library. And I can sign into my library just by putting my card number and my pin. And that's it for my presentation on online libraries.